Let's talk boxing, family. Let's talk boxing. We got to do this. And this is going to be a regular part of the channel. Every Thursday, we're going to make sure we talk some boxing. Big time. Hey, look. We got to speak up for my boy Earl Spence Jr., man, because it's been a lot of Earl Spence Jr. hate as of lately. But honestly, to be honest, not even as of lately. It's been going on his entire career. They took away his credit for beating Keith Thurman, Lamont Peterson, even though Lamont Peterson was looked at as a high-level opposition. Back at the time in which he fought him, he was looked at as a top welterweight. Uh, definitely a top lightweight. Lamont Peterson was looked at as a tough fight, tough opposition, but he was discredited for that. And then in his next fight against Mikey Garcia, which we know was a top level junior, uh, junior welterweight, lightweight, undefeated fighter, one of the best counter punchers in boxing, a pound for pound fighter, somebody that, you know, definitely garnered his respect and earned his respect in the sport of boxing that was taken away from him and then when they realized they couldn't fully take it away from him because mikey garcia is a first ballot hall of famer in his own right since they realized they couldn't take that away from him they said well he should have stopped mikey garcia mikey garcia is too small well should floyd mayweather has stopped manny pacquiao we're talking about top level fighters. We're not talking about some old bums who just get in there and get steamrolled. No, we're talking about top level fighters. Nobody has ever stopped Mikey Garcia. What makes you think that he was gonna go in there and get stopped? Like, let's let's quit that. But then Sean Porter, that whole situation with him. Even though Earl Spence Jr. told us that he was 190 pounds going into that fight. Well, going into the training camp, he had to shave 43 pounds. Which means, you know, that he was dehydrated. He was depleted of his natural energy. His body was at his weakest. It was at his weakest. Sauna suits, running in 100 plus degree weather. All of that stuff, you know, highly dehydrated in the worst shape possible, even though he looks like he's in great shape physically. And that doesn't even mention the mental, the mental strain that it puts on you, the mental aspect of it all, because mental is more important than physical. That doesn't even account for that. But that was taken away from him because they said Sean Porter shouldn't have been able to go in there and brawl with him. He exposed Spence, but we have never seen anyone steamroll Sean Porter. And I don't know what y'all thinking. What about Terrence Bud Crawford? He just stopped him. No, that was Kenny Porter that Terrence Crawford stopped. No, Kenny Porter stopped Sean Porter. But honestly, if you look at the whole overall event and how it went, it really honestly looked like it was set up that way from the beginning. Because if you think about it, Sean Porter believes that he gave Earl Spence Jr. that notoriety by going in that unification bout with Earl Spence Jr. to where Earl Spence Jr. got over 300 uh, and something plus thousand pay-per-view buys. We know he did that with Mikey Garcia as well, but he did it again with Sean Porter and then also garnered a belt in a unification bout in a fight that was fight of the year that everyone seen and everyone was talking about. So Sean Porter felt like he was a part of, you know, the ascension of Earl Spence Jr. to that elite spot in the welterweight division. And I would agree he is, you know, but not one that, you know, made it like you, you didn't do the heavy lifting. You were not the full heavy lifting. That was all on Earl Spence Jr. and the accumulation of fights and knockouts in a way that he was steamrolling through that division. That's what got him to that top spot. But yeah, Grunt, I'll give you that respect. You were a part of it. But he feels like he is the one that is credited for that. If it wasn't for him fighting Earl Spence Jr., Earl Spence wouldn't be at the peak that he's at. That's how Sean Porter feels. So what he did was he told Terrence Crawford, I'm going to give you this alley-oop as well, give you this fight, and I don't have a belt. So the only way that I can give you that notoriety that I gave to Earl Spence Jr. is by allowing you to stop me, even though I'm going into retirement anyway. I'm sure he... 
talk to Terrence Crawford about him going into retirement. And then, you know, they discussed having his one last fight. Pitched it to Bob Arum. Bob Arum knew it wasn't going to sell much. So he like, I ain't buying that fight. Then it went to, you know, a, a bid. And yeah, y'all know what happened from then on at that point. But honestly, Sean Porter was right there in that fight up until the point in which he got dropped. And I know a few, uh, a few bloggers and a few people in the media said that they had Terrence Bud Crawford up. But I don't believe anybody else said they had Terrence Bud Crawford up. Everybody else who watched that fight seen Sean Porter was winning that fight. He was clearly winning that fight. He was clearly winning that fight. And it is a testament to Terrence Bud Crawford's mindset that someone told him that he was down on the scorecards and then he went out there and dropped Sean Porter. That is a testament to that man's mindset. And we're not taking nothing away from Terrence Bud Crawford because he's a top level opponent and a transcendent talent within the sport of boxing. First ballot Hall of Famer, one of the few four belt undisputed champions, three division world champion. The man is elite. He is one of the greatest of all time. Don't take anything away from that man. But what I'm saying is, man, I know that they knew how close of friends they were. Sean Porter was going out and Sean Porter allowed his partner and best friend in the sport to ascend up to the level of Earl Spence Jr. Because Earl Spence Jr. Earl Spence Jr. was calling for that 60-40 split, that 70-30 split. So what better way to even a playing ground than to give Terrence Crawford a knockout over the fighter that ascended Earl Spence Jr. to the next level by getting that WBC strap. I can't give you the strap, but I can give you the knockout over me, and that makes you look better in the triangle theory. That makes you look like a better fighter. Y'all get what I'm trying to say? That was the plan from the gate. They knew what it was. It was for Terrence Bud Crawford to have more leverage in business talks. Y'all got to pay attention to how this thing is going out. Y'all letting it go over your nose and right over your head. I'm telling you what it is. You can see the, 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 the writing on the wall. Terrence Bud Crawford won 50-50. Oh, this, this, this Sean Porter. You won 50-50? I'm going to give him 50-50. Once I allow him to get the stoppage over me, now they got to call for 50-50 because, hey, he just beat Kell Brook. He beat Sean. He beat me now. The two best wins on his resume, uh, what people say, because Danny Garcia up there as well. And that one is being diminished as well because, hey, they say, you know, it, he didn't look that great, even though he was coming off of a car accident. The Jordanus Ugas, he was diminished for that one as well. And it's one of those things, man, where you see every time Errol Spence Jr. fights someone, they start to devalue that fighter as if he's nothing. We clearly know that Sean Porter was at the end of his career because he retired after that fight. Which means that he had nothing left in the tank. Even though Sean Porter can get on any podcast he wants and talk about how, no, he was A1 and he was at the peak. Kenny Porter clearly stated that you didn't uh, complete and accomplish what he wanted you to in training camp. Which means you cannot, you cannot do it anymore. You couldn't do it anymore. You were not the same Sean Porter from Earl Spence because if you were, you would have completed that training camp. But nobody's speaking on these talking points. Sean Porter was different. Carol Brook was different. He admitted it out of his own mouth. He was not the same fighter from Earl Spence. During that fight, he admitted that he couldn't make the weight. And that was years prior. He admitted that. He was fighting at mid middleweight. He came back down, depleted himself, and even, even after already being damaged goods, already having, you know, cyborg eyes and both eyes, Terrence Crawford hit him in the eye, and that was the end of the fight. Even though Keith, I mean, Kell Brook, my bad, Kell Brook was clearly winning that fight. Kell Brook was clearly winning that fight. Let's just be honest. But everything is always taken away from Errol Spence. And you got the legends like, Man, and I love this man to death. Man, I grew up watching him, man. One of the guys I looked up to. And Roy Jones Jr. Coming out talking dirtball badly about how this man is going to be stopped. How Earl Spence Jr. is going to be stopped by the sixth round. You know that's Cap. You know that's Cap. They, they just have a hatred for the PBC. Because they were never 
they never had the ability to make the kind of money that the PBC and Floyd and all of those boys made in their career. Mike Tyson got that same hatred for him. He says it's from the Ali comment, but no, it's from the fact that Floyd Mayweather betted on himself and made smart investments throughout his career. And that makes those older, those older legends jealous. They have a lot of jealousy towards the next generation because they feel like they laid the foundations and they should get their just dues financially and, you know, word of mouth. And they do get it word of mouth, but nobody owes you anything. The only thing they owe you is to carry the sport on their backs and keep on going. That's it. To keep elevating. That way, each generation makes more and more money. That's what they owe you. To keep the trend of ascending up going. That's it. But they talk dirtball badly about them. You heard every one of these fighters, except for Polly Maginotti. Polly, Polly, Polly gave Earl his respect because Polly understands the sport of boxing. Polly understands that Earl, Earl is, is the more dominant specimen. If we're talking about physically and he understands the fact that Earl has not displayed all the tools that he has in his toolbox. I don't see what y'all see whenever y'all like Terrence Crawford just needs the box. He just needs the outbox Spence. Where? I've been watching Terrence Crawford's whole career and I've never seen Terrence Crawford have this super next level boxing ability of a Floyd Mayweather. Yeah, he has the cat-like reflexes. Yeah, he has all that. But it's just something different about Floyd Mayweather's boxing, his timing, you know, his defense, his defense to offense, his, his ring generalship, you know, just the fact that he's always in control of everything. We've seen Terrence Crawford not be in control many of times. Floyd Mayweather's going to come out from round one to round 12 and control the entire pace of the fight. You're going to fight at his pace. We've te we seen Terrence Crawford fight at his opponent's pace plenty of times. We've seen Terrence Crawford detour away from the game plan. My bad. But we've seen that Terrence Crawford can be easily penetrated mentally and detour away from what they set up for that opponent. But the thing is, you cannot game plan for Earl Spence Jr. Earl Spence Jr., there's no one like him out there. Earl Spence Jr. is a machine that is relentless. His condition in his next level. Earl Spence is going to hit you. For every time you hit Earl Spence, he's going to hit you three times. He's going to show the judges that he's more active. Earl Spence is going to hit you everywhere. He's going to hit your body. He's going to hit you jabs to the solar plex. He's going to hit your arms. Heavy shots to the arms. Heavy shots to the forearms. Elbows. Chin. Top of the head. Jaw. He's going to hit you everywhere. He's going to hit you everywhere. Chest. He's going to hit you everywhere, man. Temple. He's going to punch wherever he can legally punch. Earl Spence is going to punch you. He's going to pin your gloves, punch you. Earl Spence is going to get off whatever. And there's no way to stop Earl Spence from getting off. So, I don't see Terrence Crawford outboxing Earl Spence because for you to have the ability to outbox Earl Spence, you have to have that talent level of a Floyd Mayweather. And we even heard the stories about Floyd Mayweather and Earl Spence in sparring where it was said that Earl Spence held his own. Well, let's just be honest. They said that Earl Spence actually got the best of Floyd Mayweather. So if Floyd Mayweather's superior, superb, greatest of all time, clearly, eye test, and the numbers tell that, if he couldn't outbox a Errol Spence Jr., what makes you think a less superior boxer who is a high level, an elite, and a Hall of Famer? Don't get it wrong. But what makes you think he can outbox Errol Spence? The only thing that can save Terrence Crawford is Terrence Crawford having the punching power to keep Errol Spence off of him. That is it. And, and, and I think, you know, Terrence Crawford does pack a pretty good punch. But I feel like he's he's over accommodated for the power that he said to have. Because honestly, man, he's not been fighting the best of opposition. He's not been fighting. And even if there are very good names, he hasn't been fighting him at the, the top level of their career, the peak of their career, the prime of their career. 
He's fought in them after they're beaten and battered and at the end. You know? So it's like Earl is fighting these dudes at a different time, man, when they're more prime, more peachy, and more ready to go. When they're more conditioned and, and, and ready. It's not the same, man. It's not the same. Two, three years is a huge difference, man. When you get past 30, it's a huge difference. And dudes act like they just don't know that. Like they don't understand how the anatomy works, man. Things change, especially when you're getting hit so much. When you're getting punched so much, your body going to change and morph and, and slow down in ways that you can't explain at an accelerated rate. When you're going through these high-level athletic anything in any realm of sports, but especially in combat sports, and especially in a sport that's as brutal as boxing, all of them body shots that, you know, that man, Sean Porter, was taking. Earl Spence is damaging people's careers, man. When they fight Earl Spence, look at them before and after they fight. After they fight Earl Spence, their careers are over. Not too many come back. And if they do come back, they are a shell of themselves and who they were before they fought Spence. Danny Garcia has not shown us anything since he fought Spence. Oh, guys, we, we might not see oh, guys be the same. Keith, Keith, uh, Kel Brook was not the same. Mikey Garcia was not the same. Like, no one's the same after fighting Spence. So if Terrence Crawford does not get Spence's respect in the first couple rounds and have the ability to keep Spence off, it's going to be an early night. I have not seen Terrence Crawford show us the ability to box on the inside. I've not seen that. I know he can, but I've, I haven't seen him do it at a level of Earl Spence in the a level of fights that Earl Spence has done it in. Under the pressure that Earl Spence has done it in. Earl Spence shown us that he can box at a high level with a high level boxer. That he can beat you at your own game. Terrence Crawford wants to do that as well. And in my opinion, that is going to be his downfall. But honestly, what else, what other option does he have? Because he's not going to outbox an Earl Spence Jr. Let's just keep it up. Let's keep it a buck. Let's keep it a buck. I just don't get why there's so much Earl Spence Jr. hate when this man has done nothing but be humble. He does not disrespect anyone. Don't y'all see? Like his humility is 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 garnering him so much hate, and it's like for a black man, you damned if you do, and you damned if you don't. Because if you're a cocky, you know, boastful, bragging type of person, you know, like a Floyd or or a Terrence Bud Crawford, you get chewed up and spit out. But even if you're a humble, you know, very chill, you know, very calm type of guy like an Earl Spence, and the only thing you do wrong is really have a few drinks and crash your car every now and then. Well, one time, I ain't saying it like that, but even if, you know, you're that type of person, you're still scrutinized, you're still criticized, you're still pulled down. They still try to tear all the accomplishments down as if you're nothing. They call Terrence Crawford a Hall of Famer now because they want to discredit Earl Spence. Earl Spence is a Hall of Famer as well. He's done more than enough. He's done more than enough. Let's stop playing. He's fought more elite talent than Terrence Bud Crawford. Yes, he has. I don't get how anyone can say he hasn't. The proof is in the pudding. And Floyd Mayweather is only inserting himself into this fight because he's on a money grab. And he's also still showing. To me, that shows that Floyd Mayweather still feels some type of way about what happened in that sparring match against Earl Spence Jr. And Floyd himself does not feel that he can beat an Earl Spence Jr. Floyd, if you are so competent and you believe that your boxing wit and your talent is so far superior that you know when someone's on that level. I challenge you to get in that ring with Earl Spence Jr. and show the world that you can do it. But like I said, man, I'm taking Earl Spence Jr. in this fight. I don't see any way. I see the talent in Terrence and I know there's a possibility, but I just don't see any way that Terrence Crawford wins this fight against Earl Spence Jr. I just don't, man. And I'm just giving my honest opinion. I keep going back and looking at old fights and trying to see, but I just don't see it, man. 
I just don't see it. Terrence Crawford has not shown us that he can do that at a high level against a high level opposition like Earl Spence Jr. You're not going to hit Earl Spence in the eye and Earl Spence just sat down like Kell Brook did. Kell Brook feared for that eye socket being re-punished. He feared for him having to go through those surgeries once again. So once any sign of you know disaster occurred, he quit. I, I explained to y'all what happened in the actual uh, Sean Porter fight. So we haven't seen Terrence Crawford do that at this level at welterweight. So he got to show me something, man. Got to show me something. Y'all let me know how y'all feel. I'll let y'all know how, my, how I felt. Shout out to both of these fighters, man. Amazing top level fighters, man. And this is one of the beautiful things about the sport of boxing, man, is that, you know, we actually get to see these guys and talk about, you know, these high level fights, man. And who could, you know, it's just so, so many possibilities, man. So many possibilities when it comes to the sport of boxing, man. So y'all let me know what y'all think, man. Shout out to y'all. You know, shout out to these men. And uh, make sure you drop a subscribe and ring that bell icon. With that being said, I'm out.